come to have a good time, you're at the right place. <laughs> On Sunday morning, we come to have a good time in the Lord. Yes. Not to do nothing that God don't approve of, yeah. but to do it in a way that God approves of things, and we can still have a good time because we're thankful this morning that God allowed us to be here. Amen. You know, it wasn't by our own strength that we woke up this morning, but it was by God Almighty. I want to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day this morning. You know, we know if this is Mother's Day, we'll have people from two to two. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Father's Day. <laughs> and so, I mean, I'm going to let you figure that out for yourself. <laughs> But we're here, yes, sir. Yes, sir. and all the fathers that are here, I just want to wish you a happy Father's Day. Yes. You know, <clears throat> it's so good to be in the Church of Christ. Amen. It's so good to be a member of the body of Christ. Amen. The church that we know that Jesus died for. This morning we want to take a few minutes and and just deal with obeying the scripture. You know, in Matthew twenty three, Matthew seven and twenty one. Jesus said, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I confess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You know, in verse 21, Jesus said, Not everyone said unto me, yes. Lord, Lord. To let into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will, this is the bottom line, the will of my Father, which is in heaven. You know, that's a blanket statement because it covers everything and everybody. Nobody is exonerated from that. It's the will of God. But you know, when you think about Jesus said, the bottom line, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, yeah. shall enter into the kingdom. Yeah. But he that doeth the will of my Father, Amen. which is in heaven. Yeah. Our duties as Christians. It's all about obeying the will of God. It's not about what I think or what you think. But it's all about what the word of God says. We're living in a time where even in our own brotherhood, brothers don't want to hear what the word of God has to say. But Paul said in Romans 10, brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they been ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Every conceivable way, God has advised us and given us a plan on how to serve and how to please Him. Yes. 
And so Paul said, uh, we're not willing to submit ourselves to the righteousness of God. And in Jeremiah 6, the Bible said, stand ye in the way and see. And as for the old path, what is the good way and walk therein? But they said, we will not walk yes, therein. Yes, We're living in a time that they wouldn't dare say that today. But you know, actions always speak louder than words. Is that right? Amen. And we can see that most of us are trying to put on a show for the Lord. God don't want us putting on no show for him. Whatever God has said to us is what God wants us to follow. Is that right? You see, I don't have no business going about trying, uh, trying to establish my own righteousness when I have the righteousness of God right here. Mm -hmm. I don't have to try to establish anything. <laughs> you know, the folks back in the old days, they were trying to impress Jesus. But Jesus in Matthew 15 said, ye hypocrites, how well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, yes. and they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, but in vain yes. do they worship me, yes. teaching for doctrine yes. the commandments of man. Now how can man have a doctrine when it was Jesus that died for you? Amen. And you know, we got a lot of people want to follow man's way and not God's way. So many people don't see no joy in doing what God says, but they would rather follow some man. You know, in Matthew 7, and the verses 13 and 14, Jesus talked about two ways. Yes. All right. In verse 13, he said, Enter ye in at the straight gate. Mm -hmm. right. But listen, he's for wide is the gate yeah. and broad is the way that lead it to destruction. And many there be which go in therein. The wide gate. When we look around, we can see that many people are going in at the wide gate yeah. because the wide gate yeah. is the easy gate. I don't have to do what God says because I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm will worshiping. <laughs> and, and the wide gate is my way. Amen. Even though Jesus said it's the way to destruction, I, I know what makes me feel good, so I'm going to follow that way. The broad way is the way to destruction. But you know, when you read Proverbs 12 and 14, Solomon says, there is a way yes. that seemeth right to a man, mm -hmm. but the end thereof yes. are the ways of death. Yes. It seems like it's the right thing it seems like it's the good thing, but it's the word, it's the road to death. Anytime we don't follow the words of God. In verse 14, he's because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Why is it so hard to find? Because we're not looking for it. Mm -hmm. 
We, you know, yeah. we find out that people say, well, I read the Bible all the time. What am I studying the Bible? <laughs> read is all right. I read the newspaper. But I can't tell you a story I seen on the cover. But I can tell you what the Word of God said because I study the Word of God. And if a man were to save his life, He's going to have to study God's word and going to have to make the application of it in his life. But you know, we live in a time where John said that John 12 and 43 says, For they love the praises of men more than the praises of God. I can see these people having a hallelujah good time. High five and just just praising one another. But they're not doing it God's way, but they don't care about that. As long as they are happy doing what they do. But because the Bible says they love the praises of man more than the praises of God. But when we look at Matthew 7, we notice that Jesus targeted. Three different groups. People, those who prophesy, right. those who cast out devils, mm -hmm. and those who done many right. wonderful works. Yeah. Now all of these are denied because they had no authority. They were not in Christ, or they were not doing God's will. Because we can be in Christ and not do God's will. We're just as bad off. Amen. You know, we got to show now that we would rather follow preachers than to follow God. Well, group, get, get a, a Isaiah 9, verse number 16. It said, We have a lot of charity organizations doing great things. Well, people, the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, the Social Security, but the problem with that is they have not obeyed God. I don't care all the good you can do, but until you obey God and keep his commandments, there's no way that you can be saved. God is the only way. The key to heaven is obeying and keeping the commandments of God. In Isaiah 9 and verse 16, For the leaders of this people caused them to err. Now listen to this. We got, in our society, we got all kind of man followers. Me personally, I would always follow God because a man would say anything. Amen. But God can only tell the truth because uh, the Hebrew writer said, He's God and He cannot lie. Yeah. What do you say, Luther? For the leaders of this people called. For the, the leaders, the elders, the preachers, the deacons. For the leader of this people caused them to err. has caused them to err. And they, that are led of them are and they, listen, you know a lot of people say, well, it's not my doing, that's their doing. Well, if you follow them, <laughs> what do you think will happen to you? <laughs> he said, they what? And they that are led of them are destroyed. And those that are led of them are destroyed. Amen. You are destroyed. Tell me, I'm innocent. I didn't do it. Yes, you did. You followed them. When you should have been following the word of God. Right. Amen. I was watching the program this morning. Can a man understand God's word? Right. If he won't to. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, sir. The only reason why he can't understand it is because he don't want to spend no time studying it. Yes, sir. It's just not going to jump out the pages on you. 
<laughs> that means you're going to have to take the book and hours and hours you're going to have to sit and study the word of God if you're looking for eternal salvation. Amen. Amen. You don't get no free pass. Paul said in Galatians, when ye are the children of God, by faith in Christ, for as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Jesus said in John 14 and 6, For I am the way, I'm the truth, and I am the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. There is no other way. If, uh, if a man wants to be saved, he's first going to have to be in Christ. And not only in Christ, but he's going to have to obey the will of Christ. You just can't do what you want because you're in Christ. But then you got to follow the scripture. And the scripture tells us how to see, how to be saved in Christ. In fact, Jesus said, not everyone that says not to be Lord, Lord. But he that doeth the will of my father. You know, there in Romans 5, it's therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, we walk by faith and not by sight. We don't walk by what we see. We walk according to the Spirit of God, and that Spirit is by faith. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only way we can be acceptable to God is through Christ. Are you in Christ this morning? Are you in the church of Christ? Because it's the only way that you can be saved. You know, I remember reading about Paul and Simon. And you know, Saul, uh, he disobeyed God. Mm -hmm. It's always best to obey God, mm -hmm. whether you understand it or not. Right. But Saul mm -hmm. disobeyed God, yeah. and, and Samuel asked him, why did you miss us? He said, don't you know, Saul, that it's better to obey than to sacrifice. Even though God is delighted with sacrifice, it's better to obey God. And plus, Saul didn't do what God told him to do in the first place. He told him to destroy everything. The, the, even the babies, the sucklings and all. Yeah. He said, totally destroy everything. Saul kept the best of the animals mm -hmm. and he spared Agag the king. And then he said, I obeyed God. I did what he said. Mm -hmm. That sounds like Saul's lying to me. <laughs> but you know, like, Solomon writing him, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Right, right. Let us fear God and keep his commandments. And you know, in Acts 5 and 29, Peter said, we ought to obey God rather than men. They had beat them, tried to stop them from preaching the gospel, but yet and still, Peter said, we all obey God rather than me. You know, Paul said in Galatians, but do I now persuade men of God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, 
I could not be the servant yes. of Christ. Yes, sir. You see, if you become a man pleaser, it's no way you can please God. You see, men pleasers always looking for those so-called gray areas in the scripture. They doubt, they're not of the faith, and it's a whole lot of what ifs. <laughs> you, ever, you, you ever have to deal with that? Well, what if? Mm -hmm. Why not what if? I had people say, well, you know, you preachers, I mean, y'all so hard nosed that that y'all don't want to look at nothing but that's written on the line. And y'all look in between the line. I said, I tried that. <laughs> I, I would look on the line, I would look in between the line. And what I looked on, when I looked in between the line, I didn't see nothing. <laughs> but you know, that's the way you were here. Y'all too so hard to Y'all try to take the word of God uh, for what it, what it says. And, and you know, it's some gray areas there. Well, I don't know about no gray areas in the word of God. You either want to do it or you don't want to do it. Because the Bible said without faith, it's impossible to please God. A real Christian never doubts God's word. I'm talking about a real Christian. Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. For thy word is truth. Jesus was, was telling, telling the Father, sanctify them through thy truth because thy word is truth. Is that right? Amen. And you know, in Matthew 4 and 4, Jesus said, so it is written. Is that right? Yes. That man's bread did not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So when you study, don't jump out of nowhere because the word is important. You know, a lot of people say, well, big word, I'm going to keep on. Well, you need to understand what the big word is. Because that might mean the difference between heaven and hell. Because the Bible says that we live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now listen. If the Bible says, you better believe it. For the Bible is the inspired word of God. If a man want to be saved, he must be in Christ. Rufus, get, get out. John 15, 5 through 7. John 15, 5 through 7. You know, in, in this life, we have a lot of problems. Yeah. We have to deal with a lot of different things, don't we? But whatever we have to deal with, we better hold on to God's unchanging hand. Whatever you have to deal with. In John 15, I am the vine. Jesus said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. And ye are the branches. He that abides in me. He that abides in me. And I in him. And I in him. If you bring forth much fruit, well, I mean you can do nothing. he said, because without me, you can do nothing. He should have said, without me, you are nothing. Right. <laughs> but he said, without me, you can't do nothing. Read. If a man, if a man abide not in me, he said, now if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, he is cast forth as a branch, and with it, and men gather them and cast them into the fire. And, them into the fire. They are burned. and they are burned. If you abide in me, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, and my word abide in you, you can ask what you will. You can ask what you will, it shall be done unto you. and it shall be done unto you. It's all about abiding in the law. 
all of my sin in the Lord. You see, that's what a Christian is all about. You see, once you obey the gospel, get in the church and stay in the church. And dying in the church, Revelation 2 10 says, be ye faithful unto death, and you shall receive a crown of life. Now, the word of God has told us how to be born, it told us how to live, and it told us how to die. Didn't it? Mm -hmm. To be ye faithful unto death, and you should die. And because God is God, and if God makes you a promise, if God makes you a promise, you can take it to the bank because it's good as gold. If God makes you a promise because he's God and he cannot lie. In, in Hebrews 6, the Bible says, so when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no prayer, he swore yeah. by himself. Yeah. What does that mean, sister? That means that God made a promise. And God is saying, if I don't keep this promise that I made to you, I'm going out of business with God. Because I swore on my Godship that this was going to happen. If God made you a promise, you can take it to the bank. You know, Jesus says, the Lord is not slack in his promise, concerning his promises, as some men count slackness. But God is long suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that we all should come to repentance. Now, you can't ask for no more than that. Everything that we need, God got it. Is that right? Yeah. And you know, I, I don't know about you, but everything I want, God got. It. You see, I don't, I don't have anything, but I know God got everything that I need. So when, when things seem like they're hard on you, just keep calling on the name of Jesus. Don't, 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 don't give up. Don't quit. Because I remember reading about Noah. How Noah preached for 120 years. And nobody obeyed Noah. sons and their wives and his wife. But you know, I believe that the day that the flood began, the people had never seen rain before. But because uh, when, 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 the, when the rain started to fall, they went to knocking on the door
That it was eight souls that were saved by God. It was just eight out of all the people that was in the world. The twelve and the eight said, "Okay, you got that good thing. You turn around and say, you got it. I want to see you get it for it. The Bible would say, which was sometimes disobedient. The long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. Like the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. While the ark wasn't prepared. Why the ark wasn't prepared? Why few that it was eight souls, few, there was eight souls saved by water. that were saved by water. The light figure. The light figure. Turned to even baptism. Was also now save us. Right. What save us? Baptism. Right. Who? Uh. When? Now. What saves us now? Baptism. Who? Us. When? Now. If you want to be saved this morning, yeah. you will have to be baptized. For the remission of your sin. Now you know. The Bible says that we're saved. By grace. Through faith. All right. And that's not of ourselves. But it's the gift of God. Now. Everybody looking for God's grace. If you're looking for God's grace. That means that you've got to be full of faith. No faith on your part, no grace on God's part. Right. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember reading over in Second Kings where he was talking about uh, Naaman. Naaman was the captain of the king of Assyria. He was the captain of the army. Uh -huh. But Naaman had a problem and he called an emphasis. And so Naaman's wife had another maid that was working for him. And she told him that there was a savior down in somebody that could cleanse him of his leprosy down in Samaria. So I'm reading verse what, nine. Uh, so Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots. Now so Naaman he came with his horses and with his chariots. He stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And he worked at the door of the house of Elisha. Elisha sent a messenger. And Elisha didn't even come out. But he sent a messenger. Saying, go and wash. He said, go wash and wash in Jordan, in Jordan seven, times. seven times. And thy flesh shall come again. And thy flesh shall come again. And thou shalt be clean. And thou shalt be clean. Read on. But Naaman was brought. But Naaman got mad and went away and said, and went away and said, Behold, I thought, Behold, I thought he would surely come out, he to, would me. Surely come out to me. And stand and call on the name of the Lord. And call on the name of the Lord. And strike his hand and on the place. And strike his hand on the place. The left. And I will be recovered from nothing. That's what made Naaman mad. It made him mad because uh, the man of God didn't do it his way. Naaman went away uh, wrong. He was mad because he had already preconceived yeah. how God was going to cleanse him. Yeah. But when God didn't do it that way, it made him mad. Yeah. So he went away yeah, in a rage. Read on. Are not Abner and Parker, rivers of Damascus? Now see, he thought he found better water than God had found. He said, I'm not a half none, Fox River, cleaning all the water of the Israelites. The water of the Israelites. And I'm not washing them. And I'm not washing them as he cleaned. And he turned them away in a rage. And so he turned and went away in a rage. Why couldn't he wash them? Because God said, do it. But he thought that he could be cleansed 
and and and, and far further back out of the river. Mm -hmm. That's what made him mad. But you know, in little service said, my father, why not watch in the water? Has he made you do some great thing when you do not have done it? Yeah. And yeah. so when Naaman humbled himself and when watched in his journey, his flesh became that of a little child. Mm -hmm. And he was clear. All he had to do was obey the word of God and be clean. Why, why go through all this? Ain't nothing. You, you, your arms too short to try to fight God. <laughs> you can get mad all you want to. But until you obey God, ain't nothing going to change. You can obey God this morning and begin to walk in the newness of life. Everything is ready and waiting on you this morning. So if you want to become a child of God, you don't have to sit and tear on the morning bench. <laughs> All you can do, you can come down and give me your hand and give God your heart, and the brothers will be ready to baptize you this morning. Are you ready? Are you ready to be baptized? See, because uh, Peter said baptism saves us now. Who does it save? Save all of us right now. If you want to be, become a child of God, you need to be baptized. We're going to give you that opportunity this morning as together we stand and sing the Savior of the day. But I heard.